This is the first laptop that I'm claiming could replace your desktop PC or your buying decision between a desktop and a laptop. Now, this is the Predator Triton 500 SE. Believe it or not, I'm gonna show you why I think so in this video. So make sure you hang on until the end. Now, first and foremost, this laptop comes with the Intel i9-12900H. And I wanna thank Intel for sponsoring this video and sending over the Triton SE for my review. It also comes with the RTX 3080 Ti. That comes with 16 gigs of VRAM inside of a laptop. Absolutely powerful, phenomenal. 32 gigs of RAM, and a one terabyte SSD. Now we're not just biting at the heels of most desktop systems. We're actually meeting them or going beyond them in regards to just the spec out alone of this laptop before we even get into the benchmarks. Now, the one thing that I like about this system, the reason I say it could replace your desktop PC is because when it comes to a laptop, you have everything you need with one single purchase. You have a keyboard, a trackpad, a webcam, a screen, your ports, everything right here in one pack. And that's why for me, for the longest time, I've been a huge advocate of recommending laptops. However, I've never been able to claim that it could quote unquote replace your desktop PC from a performance standpoint. And this has got what it takes. Now the screen is 100% sRGB, 89% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 0.89 and a brightness of over 500 nits. So this laptop not only performs well, but also comes equipped with a fantastic screen for creative professionals. Whether you're a video editor, photographer, doing some 3D modeling, motion design, whatever it might be, you have a screen bright enough and color accurate enough to make sure your designs and creations come out looking correct on the other end. Let's jump right into the performance benchmarks. First and foremost, looking at Geekbench single core and multi-core, as well as Cinebench R20, you can see that this laptop comes ahead of every system that I have reviewed on my channel. And you could say, well, Ben, these are all laptops. And yes, I will get to why this can replace your desktop system later in the video. We'll talk about that soon, specifically in regards to video editing. That's where I'm really looking at it from a personal perspective. That is what I do a lot of on this channel. And there's one specific tests that show me that this has what it takes to replace my desktop system. Now, as we move on to Cinebench R23, we're not grabbing first position, but still at the top of the charts for those results. Now, looking at Photoshop and After Effects, you can see that this laptop has no problems in both of those programs. So if you're looking for a laptop that'll handle both digital art, photo editing, as well as motion design and anything you're doing in After Effects, this 100% has what it takes. Now, as we move on to 3D modeling, looking at Autodesk 3ds Max and Autodesk Maya, this had good scores, but it absolutely killed it in PTC Creo, topping the charts out of any laptop or desktop I've reviewed on my channel thus far. Now, as we got into SolidWorks, it did well. It would be a good performer, but not great. And the reason being is, though this RTX 3080 Ti is a beast of a GPU, SolidWorks still prefers workstation GPUs, something like the RTX A2000, A3000, A5000, something that is built for SolidWorks. The gaming GPUs do well, but they're not built specifically for that program. So just keep that in mind. Now, let's jump into the video editing results. And this is where we really start to see this laptop shine as a desktop replacement. We had fantastic export times, 1080p all the way up to 6K red footage, some of the best times I've seen on my channel. And as we're looking at playback, it had 184 drop frames in B-RAW and only 1622 in red footage. That is a fantastic score. This laptop handles red footage and B-RAW without any problems. What makes this laptop a contender for the desktop replacement is the i9-12900H that Intel equipped into this laptop. Now you have both performance cores and efficiency cores. And I wanna show you how those operate compared to a desktop system with only performance cores and threads, not having both the performance cores and efficiency cores. I ran a stress test for multitasking comparing my desktop PC to the latest Intel 12th gen CPU to see how well multitasking now performed on Intel's latest 12th generation CPUs. So on my desktop PC, I'm running a Ryzen 9 3900X with 12 cores and 24 threads. So historically, the better multitasking system because Ryzen for a long time has shown itself better at multitasking with more physical cores 
and threads. Then comes along Intel with their 12th generation CPU featuring performance cores and efficiency cores. But the question I had, is the mix of performance and efficiency cores more powerful than just straight up raw performance cores? So on my Ryzen 9 3900X, I have 12 cores and 24 threads at a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz and a max turbo clock of 4.8 gigahertz. Compared to Intel's 14 cores and 20 threads, we have six performance cores and eight efficient cores. The average base clock for the i9-12900H is about 3.8 gigahertz with a max turbo frequency of 5 gigahertz. So as you can see, the processors are very close in the amount of cores and threads as well as the frequencies. So the question is, is it better to have a mix of performance and efficiency cores or raw performance cores. Now for this test, I exported a 6K B raw project with a ton of motion graphics while also listening to two podcasts on YouTube, going around doing some Google searching, editing a thumbnail or a piece of artwork in Photoshop, all while exporting this massive project. Now for my previous PC build, I started out at about 58 minutes and 29 seconds for the export time. That's what the little Premiere Pro chart showed me. Then it ended up at an hour and eight minutes shortly thereafter, and the final export took two hours, seven minutes, and five seconds, all at around a 76% CPU usage on average. Whereas when I ran the Triton 500 with the i9-12900H, I saw a 30 minute and 48 second export time at around an average of a 46% CPU usage. So by this test, I can tell that the performance and efficient cores delineate the work across the CPU so that each of them execute the correct task that best fits their use case for the best performance during the multitasking stress test situation. Though my PC build is powerful, it was not as powerful as the i9-12900H in this system. I often find myself exporting footage, creating a thumbnail, listening to a podcast, and doing Google research all at the same time. So for me, I would be four times more efficient running the i9-12900H inside of the Acer Predator Triton 500 SE than I would staying with my current PC build. Now, before we move on to comparing the pros and cons between choosing a laptop or a desktop PC, let's check out the thermals on this system. Something I'm really impressed by, especially with these new Intel 12th generation CPUs. On Photoshop, we saw a really good array of thermals all below the mid 80s. My favorite setting would have to be the default mode. 76 degrees Celsius at about 40 decibels of fan noise, scoring a 1071 in Photoshop. That is way more than enough power to handle anything that you need in Photoshop. So this laptop will not bottleneck your workflow. You'll have exactly what it takes to cover your tasks that you need to complete. Now, moving on to the video editing thermals. Once again, my favorite fan mode would have to be default. We saw a 78 degrees Celsius at 52 decibels of fan noise and a two minute and 51 second export time. Now, if you wanna get a little bit quieter, you're gonna bump up to about 82 degrees Celsius but you're only gonna have 42 decibels of fan noise and you're gonna have about a five minute and 11 second export time for that nine minute 4K clip. So thermal results are great. But as we're looking at my likes and dislikes versus desktop and laptop, one of the advantages of a desktop is you have all that room for airflow, right? I mean, you're fitting all of that performance, the i9 processor, the RTX 3080 Ti, into this slim light package. Now again, this weighs just over five pounds and it's below one inch thick. As far as on the go friendly is concerned, you're packing desktop performance inside of really a thin and light package. Now it's not your ultra book, but it is light. So when you think about that, the advantage of a desktop PC is going to be maximizing your airflow and having cooler thermal temperatures. But you can't take a desktop PC on the go with you like this. For instance, let's talk about the battery life, something that doesn't exist in a desktop system. This laptop is great, whether you're a student or professional wanting to be on the go. This laptop can get over six hours of productivity battery life, whether it be taking Zoom calls, listening to music, researching online, or typing up a paper. You can get almost eight hours of streaming battery life, and then you get about two and a half hours of Photoshop work 
or two hours of video editing work. So once you get into more of those intensive tasks, the battery life drops off quickly, but bring your charger along with you, plug in where you're at and your video editing with full power easily. But I do like the ability to be on the go with more of those productivity tasks and entertainment. Now, one thing I really like about this laptop is it has a lot of connectivity. On the left side panel, you have your power adapter, your ethernet port, USB type A, USB type C, and your headphone jack. And on the right side panel, you have HDMI, USB type C, USB A, and your SD card slot. Most systems, most desktop systems and laptops are no longer coming with the SD card slot. And I really like this because you could have a dongle free life with this system. I have to use a dongle for my desktop and most laptops that I pick up because they don't have the handy dandy SD card reader. So big bonus there. Now, a few dislikes compared to a desktop PC. First and foremost, as I already mentioned, this laptop's gonna get hotter. It doesn't have as much room, not as much airflow, so it just doesn't cool as efficiently as maybe a full-on desktop PC. Now, the second thing is no PCIe lanes. Obviously, where are you going to put them? But that is something that is beneficial to me as a YouTube content creator. I often record videos like this one with my top camera directly into my computer. And so not having multiple PCIe lanes makes makes it kind of difficult to bring in multiple cameras. I could, however, buy a separate capture card that just kind of sits on my desk, so that could be an option, rather than sticking the card directly into the PCIe lane in the system. So you just kind of kind of work with the system that you purchase. But for me, honestly, I could pick up that external capture card and this system would work extremely well. Now, the next thing is there's no swapping the CPU or GPU. Let's say you want to make an upgrade down the road this system stays with what it has. So to be totally fair, comparing the desktop to laptop PC, can't make that upgrade. So make sure you order this system how you want it because you'll not be able to upgrade post-purchase. Even the RAM and the SSD configuration is soldered to the motherboard. But honestly, the power that the system has, you are future-proof for a good five to seven years, in my opinion. This thing will give you plenty of performance. I can't see us needing anything more than 6K footage for the next five to seven years. I mean, we're still mainly on 4K. Not a lot of people are even shooting 6K yet, so you are definitely future-proofed if you're a video editor, for sure, which is, you know, my main thing I do around here. Should you purchase the Acer Predator Triton 500 with the i9-12900H and RTX 3080 Ti? Personally, if I was in the market thinking about rebuilding everything that I've built for my desktop PC and how much it has cost me, I would go for the laptop. It just makes more sense. It's more affordable. It gets more bang for buck. If I were gonna build a system that had this much performance, it would cost around three to $4,000 before I even got a screen, a keyboard, a mouse, and all the extra dongles and peripherals I need to make the system operational. This has everything I need right here, ready to go. And even including the webcam, which I've not even given you a sample of. Here's a sample of the webcam. This is the webcam on the Acer Predator Triton 500 SE and a little sample of the audio for you as well. So that is why I'm claiming that this system is the perfect desktop PC replacement, whether you're purchasing for the first time or looking to get a little more mobile friendly and move away from the desktop PC that you currently have. I once again want to thank Intel for sponsoring this video. If you're curious about the exact live pricing, you can check out the links in the description below. Otherwise, likes if this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't want to miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.